Out of the many changes with the Domination DLC, one change that affected the best nation to restore the Roman Empire is, is the changes for Aragon. It's received a ton of flavor that we're gonna be exploring today. And for a measly 5,000 likes, we're also gonna do a very special new Granada run. So don't forget to leave that like. Now, the first and most obvious change is the fact that we have a brand new mission tree here. And that's right, you can do this mission mission tree then culture convert and go ahead and uh, form Spain and get the other mission tree as well that's possible but that being said there are some highlights within this mission tree that I absolutely adore essentially it kind of encourages you to actually go full on a Roman restoration with stuff such as the city of the world's desire by owning this bit here we change Constantinople to Catholic and Catalan our primary culture albeit we are Aragon we have Catalan as our primary culture. Just a little bit weird. Just, just a tiny bit weird. But okay, I guess it kind of makes sense, right? Since the majority of the country is Catalan, essentially the coastline here, Valencia, Barcelona, and so on. Now, aside from that, we have the old missions too, like the Consulate of the Sea still around, Conquest of Tunis, but we got Mary Nostrum that allows us the construction of caravel ships and naval combat off the own coast plus one until the end of the game. Essentially, we can match the naval supremacy of the British. A lot of permanent modifiers for various stuff, like uh, until the end of the game, we get centralized state cost minus 10% governing capacity and promoted cultures as well as overextension impact reduction by occupying the uh, coastline of uh, the Mamluks and uh, other permanent stuff like that there's also unique uh, modifiers for specific provinces of course we have the good old uh, restoration of union on the Castilians if we want to enforce it uh, via the mission we could do it or we can just wait for the uh, Iberian wedding to trigger that's still around right and it's probably the best option since you don't get all of that aggressive expansion so yes in this run we'll be focusing on getting the mediterranean under our control and then maybe if let's say we get a lot of support like 8,000 likes on this video we'll do a second bit where we actually restored the roman empire so considering my main expansion path is going to be in the mameluk and the ottoman lands i'm going to make these bad boys our first two rivals with uh, the third one being the moroccans since i intend on uh, taking the coastline of africa pretty much the entirety of the coastline of Africa to prevent pirate raids from happening ever again and to also establish myself in the uh, Safi as well as the Tunis nodes so I can filter that into my future primary node of Sevilla. Or hell, we can even do Genoa as our primary node after we conquer all of Italy, I guess. Estate-wise, it's going to be a standard estate with the plus one mana privilege for all three of the initial estates and then obviously we're going to seize Crownlands and if you're just not sure what a standard estate is, you can find out by watching my estates video, link in the description to bed. That being said, we also want to give out the strong duchies. We need two subjects in order to give this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to be uh, diplo vassalizing Navarra, get that alliance with them, royal marriage, all of this. Within less than a year, we can send them the uh, diplo vassalization offer and they will accept it after we get the royal marriage with them. We're doing this because we do have an event that will trigger once our leader dies, in which case Navarra will become a personal union of ours. I don't want them to be a personal union because that's just a wasted slot for 50 years until I can actually integrate them. So instead of that, I can just integrate them in 10 years if they are a subject and it's a lot easier. I don't waste that diplo slot for 50 years. You know what I'm saying? Religious diplomats privilege is also a big deal since it offers a ton of extra diplo rep and relations with uh, fellow Catholics. And as you probably guessed, yes, most of our neighbors are Catholics, with the exception being North Africa, which will eventually become Catholic and the Balkans, which will become Catholic too. Let's Let's face it, because that's right, we shall commit in Stein the no Sibilium. You know what I'm saying? The most famous Sibilium in all of EU4, because everybody knows about the no Sibilium. Even the most newest of player knows that's a thing. Obviously, we're getting the alliance with the uh, Castilians. If we were rivaled with the Castilians, which can happen, of course, no big deal. You can still get the Iberian wedding if they're your rival. You just have to wait for it until you get a different gender leader and then it's 
guaranteed. We also have Bernat de Villamari as our initial admiral. This guy is uh, absolute chatty. Yes. Also, Alphonse, our leader, is uh, a pretty decent general, so we're gonna make use of them. We're gonna make one army group here, and we're gonna send them over to Byzantium. Let's also build some more galleys, because we will need to have a little bit of extra support for our conquests in the Mediterranean. We need to have a strong fleet for that, essentially. If you need money, don't forget the burger loans is always available, and it is insane how good this is. Zero 0.46 interest for 500 ducats at the start of the campaign is a massive deal boys an absolute massive deal both the venetians and the austrians are really good allies against the ottomans and i think i'm gonna actually get both of them they're rival to each other but they still accept my alliance now we do have one uh, minus a diplo relation so um we're gonna need to get that strong duchies the sooner the better every one month we gotta keep an eye on this so we can send another interaction so that we can get that vassalage over navarra one more thing we need to do is we need to improve relations with Naples because eventually Naples will get an event that will either break them away from us or they're just going to get a lot of um, liberty desire and well obviously we're going to choose the liberty desire because we want to keep our union over the Neapolitans only. It's just strategic oil plantation land that is vital to our development boys. And let's bring these boyos over to Cosenza so we can uh, get ready for the attack on the Byzantines. Now, I also will try to get a spy network on Epirus and attack Epirus, but chances are they're gonna get some weird alliance and I'm not gonna wanna fight them. And it's just overall a lot easier to fight against the Byzantines, really. Oh, I just realized, because I got the Tedeum I should have just waited. Nah, it's okay. It doesn't make no difference. Uh, you know what? I don't really have too much patience for this stuff, man. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna attack them. Screw it. I don't care about the fact that I'm losing a little bit of stability and I'm losing a little bit of, um, you know, aggressive expansion. Who really cares about the schmelly orthodoxians here, man? Nobody's gonna give a schnapps, just like they didn't give a schnapps at the siege of Constantinople in 1453. Sure, sure, maybe some Genoese boyos were like, yo, maybe we should help these guys out, but. But the majority of the Christian world was just like, wow, they survived until 1453. That is genuinely impressive. <laughs> And that's right there, the story of the Byzantine Empire. They only have 6,000 in Constantinople. Actually, let's rush for Constantinople so that we can make sure the Ottomans do not attack them and siege down Constantinople whilst we're looking the other way, right? Because that can happen. I've actually had that in uh, one of my trial runs because I've had three trial runs prior to recording this, right? And the Ottomans actually managed to snipe Constantinople for me, which is not cool. You don't want that to happen. The Infantes of Aragon, basically, this event is going to give us a chance to gain permanent claims in the lands of the Kyiv. Castilians or we can get better relations with them. We're gonna get better relations because we're gonna go down the uh, diplomatic path towards getting that Iberian wedding so we don't need to get the extra aggressive expansion as I said earlier for no freaking reason right. Also go up with our stability. Need a little bit more admin points I guess two months and bye bye Byzantine army. Let's uh, leave some of these boys here. I'm gonna leave 2,000 behind and I'm gonna bring the rest of these units on the ships. I'm only leaving 2,000 just in case the Ottomans attack and then I'll come back to actually siege it after Afterwards. I'm gonna send the majority of my army over to the southern bit so I can take uh, all of that side too. Not just, um, not just what you might call it, the city of Constantinople. Last jousting tournament. That is actually pretty Gucci, my boys. So you can only get that, I think, after you get 15 army tradition or something of the sorts. I might be wrong about the amount of army tradition, but it's definitely a certain requirement for it. Which begs the question: Did I get that from the battle I just had, or did I get that from the start of the campaign? Oh, you scumbag! Epirates, are you shitting me right now, dude? Bro, bro, no freaking way, bro. Cannot believe Epirates just did this. Epirates cucked me from one province that I want. Ugh, you scumbags. You actual scumbags. <laughs> All right, let's bring the rest of the army here so we can uh, use it to attack what's re left in Achaea, and then we can move on and finish this war. Now, <laughs> Epirates made the mistake of actually backing out from that province, so that means that the fort over in Morea is gonna get re-control of the province of Corinth, and that means that I can actually... Uh, take it for myself afterwards but let's do just that right now boom shakalaka oh my god Epirus, you are not too bright my boy not too bright at all and if byzantines actually 
take and fully occupy Epirus and piece them out, then I really hope they fully annex them. Because then I can actually, um, I mean, well, actually, no, it's not going to make much of a difference, is it? Yeah, I guess we're going to help the Epirus. No, no, we're going to help the Epirus. Yep, because then we get less aggressive expansion from um, vassalizing the Byzantines and as consequence, being in a defensive war against Epirus, right? Excuse me, boys. Can you say hello to my brand new vessel? Oui, oui. It's called Navarra. And we are going to get the strong douches now. Oh, yes. That's so good. That feels really strong. You know what I mean? Feels super strong right there. Now, this is going to give us a lot of permanent claims on uh, parts of Castile plus permanent claims on Provence, which is why I kind of rushed the vassalage of uh, Navarra too, because that means we're going to get a new expansion path in the uh, lands of Provence. That's not too bad overall, considering that these areas are in the Genoese trade node, potentially the strongest trade node in the world if we uh, take over, right, the Genoese trade node. They seem to be allied to the English? Guaranteed by the English. Okay. Oh, it's because they got the alliance with the French cancelled, so the English are worried that the French are going to attack them. Alright, we'll see how that uh, that plays out. We'll be monitoring this situation here for sure. We will. Epirus is lucky we wiped out the, the Byzantine army, so now they can, uh, you know, take back their lands. A mere 976 days to take in St. Neopool. To be fair, though, that's because we were not actually getting any progress for the first 500 days of this war, I guess. I don't know. A long time, anyway. <sighs> this video was brought to you by coffee made by my wife. I love my wife. Totally wasn't paid to say that. No, but seriously though, we have two options now. We can wait until the Ottomans attack the Byzantines and that's the good outcome because if they do attack the Byzantines, we can call in our allies, namely the Castilians, the Venetians, and the Austrians. And that's just extremely easy for us to defend against the Ottomans, clearly. But uh, it can take a while, who knows? They can attack them now, they can attack them later. It, it's really just hit or miss kind of situation. In my trial runs, they attacked by 1447, but it hasn't happened. Oh, literally as I, literally as I just said that, <laughs> brother, literally as I just said that, it happened. Are you kidding me right now? Seriously right now, bro. Uh, let's bring it down to speed through in that case and bring this bad boy back. We're going to need a little bit of schnippeldorpium here, boys. And we're also going to need some more uh, units, a few more units for sure. Okay, let me think about this then. The Grand Company is probably the best option for me. Let's recruit the Grand Company here. Because remember, you can recruit mercenary units in occupied provinces. You don't need to completely control these provinces. So um, that's a bonus. All right, and we're going to bring this here. And we're going to wait for the Ottomans to attack us. Because by the time that our allies actually get to the borders of the Ottomans, it's going to take a while, right? Let's do the peace deal. We're going to go ahead and we're gonna vassalize them of course there you go 36 aggressive expansion which is pretty much nothing really we're gonna take that province for ourselves because if we do not take the province for ourselves what happens is uh athens becomes an independent nation we don't want that to happen and that's pretty much it oh let's go 100 war score now some of you asked in the comment section how come sometimes uh, ludi in your videos you can go over 100 a piece offer value that is because the enemy country has unconditionally surrendered as it says over here and i i uh clearly the money option using the shift key so that's why basically there you go that's one out of the way now we got leadership of the wars against the uh, epirates and the auto bros take note i forgot to bring the rest of my fleet so that's actually a little bit of an issue let's go back and take the rest of my fleet so that uh actually let's send the rest of the fleet back into achaea if we have uh, naval domination and we should have it because they only have 22 ships then we can easily win this war by splitting their armies up between the anatomy and the Balkan parts. And of course, let's not forget calling our allies because we were attacked in a very vile way, of course, by the scumbag uh, Ottomans and the scumbag Ipirates too. Those are the worst ones, really. Not gonna core this because I will be giving Athens back to the uh, Byzantines. They do, in fact, um, have a core in this, so it's pointless for me to core it up also, right? Let's get, let's get rid of the Epirates first, so we don't need to worry about that little schnapple dupe of an army here. And then we can uh, worry about the Ottomans after. I saw a very sizable Ottoman army heading towards us, actually, from uh, from the Anatolian side. There you go, 13,000 and 12,000. If they're divided, it's gonna be a lot easier for us to take them out, so let's hope that they stay divided here and also just realized my face was massive on screen i made it a little bit smaller so you guys can also see the war score and stuff my apologies for that to be fair i do blame uh Shmogi Dobbs, which is the dwarf that lives in my uh my my closet he made me make uh, my face big 
he said, make your face big, Ludi, and then everyone's gonna subscribe. But no, no, you know what happened? The opposite happened. Nobody subscribed because I made my face big. So now I'm big sad, okay? If you want me to stop being big sad, you should probably subscribe. So yeah, I made up that whole thing just to make you subscribe. If that doesn't work, I don't know what will, man. One easy way to encourage your allies to actually attack the enemy is to just give out objectives here. So we're gonna give uh, Austria and Venice and Castile the objectives to uh, attack these parts. And I also got military access through the Hungarian bits. This way, the Austrians have started moving moving their units through them and as consequence will actually come and help me out. Same goes for the Venetians, they just started moving their units right now. Sometimes the AI does need a little bit of a budge to do stuff really. And I also just realized that I uh, did my peace deal with the Byzantines before waiting for my uh, mercenary army to get recruited, meaning it did not get recruited over in um, in Morea. Don't make the same mistakes as me guys, do not make the same mistakes as freaking me, okay? Just don't do it. <laughs> brother, brother, what are these mistakes, Ludi? Brother. Hey, my excuse is that I've been playing too much Tarkov recently, okay? I've been playing the schnapps out of that game compared to E4. <laughs> oh, let's go! Aggressive Castilians engaging the Ottomans! Oh, let's see who wins this. Let's see. Ottomans don't even have a leader? What? Oh, this is gonna be an easy win, isn't it? This is gonna be an absolute easy win for us, I hope. Please don't win Ottomans. I don't want... How did the Ottomans lose, but somehow inflict more damages on the Castilians? This game, man. This game is just... It's rigged on the side of the Ottomans, I'm telling you right now. They they, they did something. They did something. For sure they did. They didn't do enough, though, because we got, what, a hundred and something thousand? We got a hundred and forty thousand against thirty thousand Ottomans. Yeah, okay. This is just... It's literally just a matter of clicking at this point, really. You know, I actually thought about this for a second, and, um... I've come to the conclusion that even though I'm giving this to the Byzantines, I'm still taking the same amount of aggressive. <laughs> I'm still taking the same amount of aggressive expansion. Okay, what's wrong with me? I need to start speaking properly. <laughs> All right, so the point is that um, I'm taking it for myself directly. Screw the autumn. I mean, screw the Byzantines. Okay, screw. What have the Byzantines ever done for us? Okay, come on. Holy shit, man. That's the second time I'm getting this event in four years. What? Not complaining. Totally not complaining. And. Maybe I'm not gonna give Athens. I'm gonna keep Athens for myself. I'm gonna keep it since I wanna accept Greek as one of my uh, accepted cultures and then upgrade this monument. The earlier the better because we want to get that the advisor cost reduction as well as corruption and possible advisors, right? That's a very juicy bit to get. So how many troops does it take to actually push out the Ottomans? Apparently 70,000 to win a battle against the Ottomans. <laughs> I'm not saying they're strong, but, um, okay, maybe I am saying that they're st the, the Ottomans are too strong, all right? Come on, nerf them already, Paradox. Just nerf the Ottomans. You need to do it. You know you want to do it, too. When are we getting the Byzantium Ultimaticum DLC that you promised? Never, but you should. You really should promise to give us that DLC. I feel like I made it a little bit of an overkill with the mercenaries. I, f I really don't think I needed the extra mercenaries, considering how many allies I already have. Maybe I'm just gonna suicide them into the uh, Ottoman stack. Yep, I think I'm just gonna suicide my mercs in the Ottoman stack. That's, that's the best play here. We don't need to disband them, and we make the Ottomans lose a few units in the process, right? Operation Take Back the Balkans, come completed now it's time for operation take back anatolia because everybody knows anatolia used to belong to um to us in prehistoric times just don't think about it too much and it's time for another 100,000 of our units against 20,000 of theirs and somehow they still managed to inflict more damage on us than we did on them just casual fighting the ottoman things boys just casual fighting the ottoman things don't 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 worry this is normal this is totally normal i have to say i admired the ottoman ai for sure they're not giving up with out of fight i've wiped out all of their armies and what do they resort to mercenaries they got the free company they got the uh they got the zabex as well and every single mercenary they could recruit they've pretty much recruited <laughs> so uh this is a total war according to the ottoman uh, archives that's for sure and now it looks like they also recruited the sekban which i uh, i don't remember this mercenary company but they sound really familiar hey jovianius pontanus is gonna give us one innovativeness and one stabilitatenstein oh we got plus two already hot damn Yes, I'm loving this run already. All right, look at this peace deal here, boys. Once we uh, do the peace deal, we're going to take all of this juice. So we uh, essentially cripple the Ottomans completely. And then we're going to attack them again because they made the mistake of uh, guaranteeing the independence of the uh, Serbs. Oh, would you look at that? The Ottomans started sieging down Gallipoli. So let, let, let's see what happens if I block off their army in the fort of Gallipoli. <laughs> and they got no way of retreating. Hmm. Will they get Stakenvapenikaro? 
armed or will they get stacking of up it's the first option okay it's the first option they got nowhere to run so they gonna be dead they gonna be dead real good son i'm trying to show you guys a uh, proper aragonese accent uh, that's totally what everybody in aragon sounds like in case you were wondering now boys take note this is a defensive war it is not a reconquest war so if we were to take back the cores of the byzantines we would essentially take more aggressive expansion than we would during a, a reconquest war but still we're getting a less aggressive expansion than a conquest war because it is a defensive one so because of that the peace deal is going to look a little bit weirder we're going to take epirus we're going to give it back to the byzantines and we're going to take these bits here so we can attack serbia afterwards which was again guaranteed by the ottomans so we're going to be at war with the ottomans again after we uh, peace them out we're also taking the coastline that the ottomans have and i'm talking about the entire coastline preventing them from uh, accessing their balkan holdings completely and just so we can be extra schnapple dupes we're taking ankara which means that we're gonna cut their country up in three making it insanely difficult for them to actually exist as a nation really and uh that's it that's the peace deal right there it is 151 111 and we're taking a little bit of aggressive expansion meaning everybody in this area is going to be pissed with us but it's fine because we're going to attack them anyway so it doesn't really matter if they're pissed with us now boom shaka locos 161,000 units lost most of them my allies so don't really give a schnapps and look how beautiful half of anatolia is already ours we're going to get that claim on kosovo oh i also should have mentioned that you should mothball the forts in gallipoli and macedonia i did that the ottomans re-mothball unmothballed them i guess but uh, they got zero garrison so if we actually timed this right on the first of the month we could have taken the forts uh, instantly but i actually forgot to time it so it's fine it, you know these these things happen guys these things actually happen you know what i'm saying all right now we're gonna attack the uh, serbs next so let's get this guy back so we can get a claim on the uh dulcadiri too because they are guaranteed by the ottomans the ottomans will help them out and i'm also gonna be uh, attacking i'm gonna co uh, bosnia since i plan on taking this entire region for myself not just um not just uh, Kosovo, right? Now let's rush over for the fortifications they have in the Balkans. And they also disbanded most of their mercenary units. If I waited for a few more days, they probably would have disbanded all of their units, really. Oh, no, these are actually just their regular units, right? Let me double check. Yeah, no mercenaries. Look at that. They got zero mercenaries. They disbanded all of their mercs. They got 7,000 units. So this war is essentially instantly won by us. I don't actually plan to take anything from the Ottomans now. I just need a white piece so I can attack them again in five years with the reconquest of my Byzantine uh, vassals cores and those five years are also needed for me to core up and just conquer the Balkans I guess. All right the, it seems like 58 57 they're willing to piece us out so let's uh 100% focus on Serbia and the uh, company now what's going on I'm black flagged of course let's go back here we also wanted to do the peace deal the second peace deal with them quickly because we cannot core provinces when uh we have a war with the nation that has cores on the provinces that we took so because the Ottomans have cores on these lands we were not able to core them up and i mean of course the hungarians attacked the serbs whilst i wasn't looking why not attack the serbs since uh aragon took care of their army right and snapped the freaking land you you uh, people you know what I mean here? You know what I'm- You hungry for land! You hungry for land, hungry! You should be ashamed of yourself! I'm also gonna decline this uh, royal marriage with the Castilians. We don't need it. The event doesn't require that we have a royal marriage with them. And if we do get a royal marriage with them and we do not have an heir- Wait, they also don't have an heir? Oh, that changes things. But if we uh, do get that and we don't have an heir, they will try to- They'll get the domineering attitude over us and they'll try to claim our throne. But they also don't have an heir now. So let's see what happens. Fingers crossed we get opposite gender heirs. The Syndicate Remencia is saying essentially is an event that allows you to become a peasant republic. Now, obviously, if you do this, you get some cool stuff like uh, Protector of the Little Folk is a unique trait that you can only get of uh, Eric over here and there's some uh, other flavor for this later down the line but the reality is that um I prefer to just have them as a privilege which is granted to the burgers and gives me dev cost reduction goods produce modifier because I lose out on a lot of other things if I'm not a monarchy and just it locks a few things out of the way and I'm not cool with that personally so maybe in another playthrough we're gonna go down the peasant path but not today we're going the actual strong path not the weak ass peasant republic Okay, just saying monarchy is superior in every freaking way you be quiet now And it looks like these guys also pieced out and they let us keep most of the lands All right 
What a boss! We're getting two provinces from Bosnia, y'all. Oh, nines, the Venotians are angry because we've basically cucked their every single path of expansion. Hmm. <laughs> oh, come on, Ottomans. You really gonna wipe out Karaman, dude? I literally just got my claim on them. <sighs> Feels bad, man. I Really full annexing them? Bro. Oh, come on. This is not even fair. <laughs> you fixed all the damage I did to you previously, man. This is uh, uncool, Ottomans. Uncool, completely uncool. Oh, wow. This guy is not much better than the previous one. Let's call him uh, Enrique Iglesias. <laughs> Enrique Iglesias de Trastamara, okay? Shut up. He's a historical figure. You be quiet now. He married the famous uh, historical Maria Sharapova and had beautiful kids and was an awesome individual and that I'm totally not fangirling over, okay? Be quiet now. <laughs> I'm also going to be deleting majority of these fortifications. I don't need them. I just waited a little bit until uh, the forts lowered the devastation in these provinces. And they've done their job now. I, I don't necessarily want to pay that many ducats for forts I will never be using. Only obvious exception to this is Ankara, which is Highlands. And it's in the central bit here. It's going to make it harder for the Ottomans to take the rest of the stuff, right? Looks like some people are going to be a little bit pissed with me uh, wiping out the Balkan nations. But um, I don't give a schnapps. All right. I really don't what you got a problem with that take it up with the uh, with the office of strategic having problems with i do have a little bit of overextension so let's do this hopefully that's gonna fix our overextension problems it's also very important that you lower the autonomy we uh we're, we have quite a little bit of autonomy in the uh, rebellious parts here of uh catalonia basically historically speaking this was a very turbulent period for the aragonese with uh, peasant rebellions basically crushing their lands and internal infighting absolutely devastating Dating Aragon. One of the reasons why eventually Aragon did, let's face it, become a subservient of the uh, Castilian crown. Oh my dude, are you kidding me? They've got nobody to help them if they got zero trips. This is an actual godsend right now. Is that the only province they have? Please tell me that's the only province they got. Dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay, I, I have to I have to I actually have to <laughs> I have to attack them right now <laughs> Bro, we need to attack them. Let's go. That is the easiest war for a future vassal imaginable and of course, the Ottomans keep expanding. They lost all their army, all their economy, and somehow they managed to get that back and attack all the other Baliks around. Bruh, big bruh moment. Monsieur Provence, welcome aboard. Really happy to have you here. I'm not going to cancel the Neo Corps, of course, and I am going to... Nothing else. That's it. End your rivalry for the extra prestige. Not like I really need it, but still. There you go. Boom shakalokos. And now we can bring these boys back home, of course. Now, with pretty much the entirety of Anatolia and the Balkans under our control, the next step is... Uh, a lot easier since we have the economic base and the power base to crush everybody else around us so let me know if you want to see that next part like we discussed and until the next time check out this awesome castilian run and i want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons channel members and twitch subscribers i would not be able to do this without all your support